Hello and welcome to this first 2020 edition of In TV. This is slightly unusual because like many of you, I'm at home as we all try, like millions around the world, to halt the spread of COVID-19. Others, like many of our plant operators, are still at work, there to try and make sure that we keep making the vital ingredients that are needed to fight this virus. Now, let's get on with In TV. Controlling the spread of COVID-19 amongst the world's population is everyone's responsibility. We look at everything INEOS is doing to keep our sites running, to make essential products the world needs in this critical fight. INEOS enters F1 with its sponsorship of the Mercedes team. They might not be racing at the moment, but there's a lot more to the relationship between INEOS and Mercedes AMG Formula One. Hydrogen power is on the horizon and INEOS is already involved in innovative plans to maximise its potential. We find out how the northwest of England is leading the way. It's a natural progression to go from where we are today to accelerate into greater use of hydrogen. With the global demand on resources growing and a need to reduce emissions, we explore a groundbreaking partnership between INEOS and UPM that will see plastic made from wood pulp. This is a very new concept. If you look back 20 years ago, it wasn't possible to do what we're doing today. And as always, we will provide all the latest exciting news from across the INEOS group. The coronavirus pandemic is affecting everyone on the planet. Following health advice and government guidelines will help us bring this under control. Now, INEOS was quick to adopt measures to keep its staff safe as it continues to manufacture those vital products needed in this crucial fight. On top of that, INEOS has stepped up and answered government appeals for help. This is how INEOS are helping to fight the disease. Fast-breaking developments in the coronavirus emergency in the U.S. and around the world. The number of cases soaring just today. More than 24,000 now nationwide. A quarter of the world's population is now living under some form of lockdown due to coronavirus. The world is in the grip of a pandemic. COVID-19 has changed everything in the space of a few months. However, across the globe, the fight back has begun and INEOS are joining in. The world is battling to slow the spread of COVID-19 in order to flatten the contagion curve so that medical resources are able to cope with the millions of people that will need help. One of the best ways to prevent and slow the spread is through good hand hygiene. Frequently clean your hands by using an alcohol-based hand rub product like a gel or wash your hands with soap and water. The epidemic in the UK has brought with it a huge surge in demand for many products, one of them being hand sanitizer. Shops sold out within days of the outbreak, leaving stocks depleted for those that need it most, the nurses and doctors treating the sick. I think I personally today have the equipment I need, but I don't think we have all the equipment we need, no. Um, and I think there is, among my colleagues here and in other hospitals, sort of sickening panic about what is to come. Health and safety is a core INEOS value, and we wanted to help in any way we could. So we answered the government's appeal for manufacturers to step up. There is, of course, a global uh, supply issue. Uh, you know, everyone is trying to get access uh, to uh, PPE. And you'll have seen the health secretary announce some days ago a plan that we have in terms of more manufacturing in the UK. And I want to pay tribute to uh, all of those uh, businesses such as uh, Burberry, uh, and uh, INEOS and Diageo and others who are uh, stepping forward to um, help in that effort. Tom, welcome to you. Ten days, how on earth are you going to build a factory in ten days? We basically just said to the government, what do you need help on? This was one of the things they came up with, said very, very quickly, we've got a problem with hand sanitizers. So we said, fine, we can do that and we're just going on and doing it. Great initiative. Thanks very much for joining us. 
In just 10 days, INEOS constructed new factories across Europe to make hand sanitizer, supported by all parts of the business. So Jim Radcliffe, who is the chairman of INEOS, was looking for the opportunity to support and, and help in this, uh, in this crisis. And INEOS, in fact, make all of the raw materials that go into making hand sanitizer. So he set his team the challenge of making uh, three separate plants. Just weeks after announcing the project, INEOS has established production lines at Newton Aycliffe in the UK, Herner in Germany, Etain and La Vera in France. The challenge we faced was um, enormous when we were told um, two weeks ago that this is what we need to do in 10 days. I don't think anybody thought it was possible. But it doesn't stop there. INEOS are creating even more plants across the world, including in the USA, in Jacksonville, Arkansas, and in Neville Island, Pennsylvania. Each plant in Europe is producing one million bottles of hand sanitizer per month for hospitals. And Team INEOS has been helping to get these supplies where they're needed. We obviously move a lot of uh, equipment around the world all the time. So people, bikes, equipment, nutrition products, vehicles, We've got a great logistics team who are constantly doing the operations for the team. With the plants up and running, the NHS and hospitals have already received supplies of this vital product free of charge, with many more deliveries still to come. It's absolutely fantastic that British manufacturers have stepped up the fight against the coronavirus and we're in this together. Gibt's ja nicht mehr so viele und wir haben wirklich Schwierigkeiten, diese Desinfektionsmittel in ausreichender Menge für die Krankenhäuser, für das, was notwendig ist, zu bekommen, einzukaufen. Und deswegen sind wir sehr dankbar für diese große Menge, die wir jetzt hier bekommen haben. Damit kommen wir schon mal ein ganzes Stückchen weiter. Ineos can move quickly to provide these supplies because we are one of the largest producers of the two key raw materials needed to make it. An early adopter of social distancing, we have worked hard to ensure that our employees stay safe while our sites keep running. Sites that produce chlorine to keep our water clean, that make chemicals for sanitation, including soap, bleach and disinfectant, that make products which go into retrovirals and respiratory antibiotics, that produce the materials to create face masks, rubber gloves and ventilators and sites that even create products that are used in the search for a vaccine to COVID-19. INEOS is a company with huge resources and manufacturing skills and is committed to playing its part in the battle against COVID-19. We are in this together and together we will beat this disease. We are working really hard to do what we can to help this situation. We're in this together and together we can beat this. Now, there are still exciting things happening around the world of INEOS. Despite the postponement of all sports, INEOS's interest in pushing the boundaries hasn't diminished. Here is what INTV has learned about our newest sporting collaboration. Every once in a while, new players surface within the world of sports. Players that force others to take note. To enter that arena and compete at the highest level it takes talent, grit and determination. Just two years ago, INEOS was the largest company people had never heard of. But it's now a sports stable to be reckoned with. No Cuban is limited. And its thirst for a challenge has not abated. This February, INEOS became part of the motorsport world's crown jewel. Formula One. The deal will see INEOS sponsor the Mercedes AMG Patronus Formula One team and enter a long term agreement. But this is more than just a name on the car. Since last December, Mercedes and INEOS have been working together, sharing expertise and technological capabilities to unlock performance gains and give their teams an edge. They've got involved in our America's Cup challenge with some of their technical people and that's making a big, big difference. Having designers and engineers at this level really pushing the boundaries of, as they are in their respective sports but also now together, undoubtedly we're, we're going to be stronger. We share common values. Once that happens, everything else comes easy. Based in Brackley, 70 miles northwest of London, the Mercedes F1 team headquarters is a state-of-the-art technology centre. It's here that their experts work tirelessly to develop championship-winning Formula One vehicles. 
Their drive and passion is exactly what attracted the attention of INEOS, who share those same values. It's good to be in one of the world's top, probably top three sports. It shows this, the strengths of the brand and we had a fantastic understanding immediately. INEOS Team UK are already reaping the benefits of Mercedes' technical knowledge, with the other INEOS sports teams eager to combine with their new colleagues. It's a partnership based on the same foundations that is focused on shaping the future of sport. At INEOS, we're constantly searching for new and innovative ways to keep our business sustainable. Using hydrogen as a fuel source is an exciting prospect for the future. It could have a big impact on decarbonisation, and INEOS are already involved in making this happen. Energy is fundamental to everyday modern life. But if we are to meet new climate targets with zero carbon emissions, providing sustainable alternatives to fossil fuels is essential. One answer could be hydrogen, which INEOS have been creating and using in plants for decades. Now it could hold the answer to helping clean up our inner cities and power transport and communities. People have talked about hydrogen as a fuel of the future for the last 30 years. In reality, hydrogen is being used as a fuel now. It's a natural progression to go from where we are today to accelerate into greater use of hydrogen in the future in the automotive industry, in the shipping industry, and as a fuel for people in everyday life. As we look forwards, and nation states want to get to that net zero emission state, the good thing about hydrogen is it's a non-carbon fuel. So when you fuel with hydrogen, you're not making carbon dioxide. In addition to not producing harmful pollutants, Hydrogen is produced as a co-product from existing chemical processes. One of those is electrolysis, used to create chlorine and caustic soda. In this process, an electrical current is passed into a vat of salt water through two metal rods, a positively charged anode and a negatively charged cathode. As the current passes through, chlorine gas is formed at the anode and hydrogen at the cathode. This process can also be used to generate hydrogen using water. And at Innovin, an INEOS business, a number of pilot tests around this method are being carried out at Runcorn. Innovin produces hydrogen at its Runcorn site, which we use locally as a fuel. So we're very familiar and have been for a number of years with all aspects of the generation of hydrogen, the storage of hydrogen, the transportation of hydrogen, and also ourselves using it as a fuel within our Runcorn site. Countries around the world are starting to take notice of hydrogen. And here in the UK, Innovan are helping drive this change by working in cooperation with local councils to explore its use as a power source and transport fuel in the North West. So the North West is very much at the forefront of the net zero agenda. The, there's a number of projects that are, that are taking place. So the Liverpool city region is looking to pilot a fleet of hydrogen buses and a number of refuelling centres so that those buses can refuel uh, around the area. We have the supply. The demand is something that we really need to drive forward. What we want to create is very much a clean, green, industrial eco-structure that enables hydrogen to be right at the heart of the fuel source. As well as transport, hydrogen could be used to power homes and businesses. But to do either, the right infrastructure and supply chains are needed. Here at Store Energy in Cheshire, INEOS have used natural salt caverns to store gas for decades. Together with local government, they are now looking into the feasibility of using them for hydrogen storage in a study called Project Centurion. So we see the future for the 2050 net zero target as being in hydrogen. Salt caverns that are used for natural gas are also perfect for hydrogen. The chemical makeup of salt makes them essentially impervious to leakage. For the UK, we believe it's important to have storage sites like this for security of supply uh, as much as anything else. So one, it allows trading within the market and it, and it creates economy around that, keeps prices low for consumers. We found working with INEOS to be a really positive experience. For us, it's been helpful to have a partner on board that sees the value in the asset that we've got here to create a, a new hydrogen economy within the northwest. The appetite for the use of hydrogen is significant. The challenge is turning that appetite into a reality. We believe at Innovin and at INEOS we are incredibly well placed to meet that challenge. INEOS is uniquely placed to deliver hydrogen not only to its own operation and move us towards a much lower carbon footprint but also to provide hydrogen into the communities and nations in which we operate. 
and I think that's a tremendous opportunity for us in the future. Sustainable production of the world's essential materials is something that INEOS really strives for. Our recent agreement with Finnish biofuels company UPM will provide us with a way of producing plastic from a residue of wood pulp. Sounds too good to be true? Well, here's the story. Trees have been a valuable raw material for humans since the dawn of civilization. And now, as the world looks to reduce its dependency on fossil fuels, they could hold the answer to providing a new sustainable way of creating plastic. For me, the tree is full of possibilities. It is a molecular factor in nature. And we want to utilize that precious raw material as far as possible. Deep in the forests of Finland at the UPM biorefinery, trees are drawn from sustainable forests to create paper and wood products. During the process of pulping, wood fibers are separated, leaving a waste residue called crude tall oil. From this oil, a biofuel is created through a chemical process involving hydrogen. The end result is a biofuel that can replace fossil fuels in the creation of plastic, called bioverna. This is a very new concept. If you look back 20 years ago, it wasn't possible to do what we're doing today. We use something which has grown naturally and is renewable. What that means is that the greenhouse gas emissions of making that particular product are reduced versus the other alternatives which are available on the market today. This February, INEOS announced a new partnership with UPM to provide this biofuel. We are so pleased with the partnership with UPM because we think that the bio raw material that they're able to deliver us is extremely powerful. This power lies not just in its sustainability, but that it can be used in some of INEOS's existing processes to create the same high quality products. Those plastics are coming from a residue material from the paper and pulping industry. So they deliver a huge greenhouse gas saving compared to the fossil equivalent. So we're able to measure and track over 100% greenhouse gas savings compared to their fossil equivalent. And the beauty of those bioattributed polymers is that they're still tracking through our system the same way that our normal stuff does. So it can still be recycled. Every step of the new polymer from forest through to its final end form will also be tracked and certified by the Roundtable on Sustainable Biomaterials to ensure it meets the highest standards of sustainability. It's very important for INEOS to work with companies like UPM who have a very sustainable supply chain. It's very important for us that we can prove what that supply chain is, where the materials have come from, and that they truly are achieving the credentials that we're claiming. Companies like UPM and INEOS are driving these kind of changes. We share the same values. We are showing the world that this can be done. We can do great products, we can do great things together, and so the rest can follow us. By making the plastics process more sustainable, it allows for the creation of vital, everyday products with a greatly reduced impact on the environment. Now what's really important and what INEOS is driving to do is continue um, using plastic for those applications, but deliver a low carbon equivalent. We'll be following the story of our new technologies and their application in forthcoming episodes. Now, safety, health and environmental performance at INEOS are our highest priority. And last year, thanks to the hard work and commitment of our teams, we saw our safest year on record. Here is InTV's in-depth look at how we achieved that. 2019 saw INEOS record its safest year since the business began. Last year, it achieved a recordable OSHA injury rating of just 0.16. But what does that really mean? Firstly, let's understand that number. To give you an idea, here is calculated risk taker, Keen Clymer, and INEOS's Chief Operations Officer, Simon Laker. An OSHA rate, a recordable injury rate of one is the equivalent of a, a hundred people working over a working year. And that would be an OSHA recordable rate of one. So we operate at 0.16. So INEOS is seven times safer than just one injury on a site of 100 people in an entire year. That remarkable performance is evaluated by regulatory body OSHA. OSHA is the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. 
part of the US Department of Labor, they have a widely used set of standards to gauge working conditions. A business's ultimate measure of safety is their total recordable injury rate. This is a number that can be calculated for any business to work out how safe it is. The lower that number, the better, and INEOS are way below the industry average. If you look at our industry, typically the petrochemical industry runs at 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, something like that. We run at 0 0.16. There's very few people operating that level across equivalent of 50,000 people. That's a remarkable performance. Every day, thousands of activities are happening and they all have to happen in the right way to achieve that kind of performance. So, it's recognised globally that INEOS is an incredibly safe place to work and an industry leader. How have they achieved such unprecedented safety records? Well, that's where INEOS's 20 principles come in. So the key frameworks that we have in place are the 20 principles, uh, which is the bedrock of our entire basis of safety, as we call it. I think what the 20 principles has done, actually, is to bring a common approach or a common platform to work across all the businesses of INEOS. We've seen the results of having that consistent approach. With the 20 principles forming the foundations of their safety culture, INEOS built on that with their auditing system. Sites are evaluated and rated using the colours red, yellow, blue and green. Green being world-class standard, blue being acceptable INEOS standard, yellow meaning there are problems to fix and red being unacceptable. But the real trick is to never stop improving and to never allow complacency to creep in. Effectively, we just moved the bar. A lot of our green scores became blue, a lot of our blue scores became yellow. So we effectively made the audit process a lot more difficult for the sites to measure themselves against. And that's the way, really, how you uh, get to the point where you've got this continuous improvement on safety. The last element to INEOS's incredible safety track record is its flat structure. Constantly improving safety is a commitment that starts with INEOS Capital the owners of the business. Again, one of the differentiations for, for INEOS, um, I think, is that very few companies have that level of engagement with the interest in the detail um, at the most senior levels of the company. And that then, of course, cascades down into, uh, through the ops directors and into the sites and into the plants and into the control rooms uh, where people have to make this stuff work every day. That being safe um, means to me, it's very simple actually, it's if you, if you come to work, um, you should go home in the same condition, if not better, than, than you left work. So you're not injured, you're not hurt, um, and we work very hard to achieve that. This dedication to safety, health and the environment runs throughout the business, even going so far as to make sure our employees have clean air to breathe. Here is how INEOS is rising to that challenge. Ordinarily, the megacities of today are busy places. Bustling, hectic, non-stop epicenters of civilization that rely on complex and crowded transport networks. But keeping millions moving comes at a price. Air quality in cities is a big problem going into 2020. With its population of 9 million, London is trying hard to improve things and reduce traffic. However, increased numbers of private hire vehicles, roadworks and bike lanes keep speeds low and emissions high. This, coupled with London's medieval road system, has resulted in levels of nitrogen dioxide comparable with Beijing and New Delhi. Nitrogen dioxide is largely produced by diesel engines. Its smaller particles are invisible and don't create smog, but they can lead to serious health problems. With its global headquarters in Knightsbridge, it's an issue that came to the attention of INEOS. It really all started from Jim asking us a question, uh, which was, what, what is the art of the possible with, with clean air? We'd all been reading about it in the papers, and we decided to start with our own uh, analysis. Particulate matter in congested cities is so small, it can travel through the lungs and cause asthma, heart attacks, and even mental health issues. Committed to keeping its staff healthy, INEOS was determined to improve the air in its main office. In 2018, a study was commissioned to evaluate the air quality. Well, first of all, to um, actually inform what was needed, 
we all decided that we needed some good measurements of the pollution in the air coming into this building, which is the head office of INEOS in Hans Crescent. We decided to make some accurate measurements at the air inlet system, which is on the roof of the building, and for that we were called in the National Physical Laboratory. Working together, they found dangerously high levels of nitrogen dioxide and particulates even inside the office. So coming into the building, we had um, nitrogen dioxide at approximately the EU limit value. But obviously, we want to get much, much lower than that. Using this data, INEOS worked with a specialist manufacturer to install activated carbon filters designed to remove the more dangerous particles in the air. So we came up with the idea of a high-level particulate filter and that's almost eliminated particulates inside the building. Also, we installed uh, activated carbon filters that actually absorb nitrogen dioxide onto the carbon itself and we've halved the levels of nitrogen dioxide. They're now way below EU standards. So we, we now believe that we've got people working in Hans Crescent probably breathing the cleanest air in, in London. I don't think there's any other company that's actually started measurements uh, and used those as a basis to improve their filter system and the air quality in their offices. But INEOS's focus on the issue doesn't stop with London. This is a global challenge and INEOS is keen to make a difference. We think of it as a bridge to clean air because all the work we're doing on our sites and all that the industry is doing, not just us but everyone in industry, to improve air quality is clearly the long-term game. We'll see more of that air filtration technology being rolled out across the global INEOS business once we're clear of the virus restrictions. Now, the year is still young, but already there's so much to talk about. And here is a roundup of the latest news. As part of ongoing conservation efforts by INEOS to preserve the threatened Atlantic salmon species, an international symposium bringing together some of the world's leading experts in data and ecology was held this January in Reykjavik, Iceland. Hello everyone, uh, welcome to Iceland. Uh, I'm going to give a short overview uh, over the Atlantic salmon populations in Iceland and uh, also some information on the management of salmon in Iceland. The symposium is part of the Six Rivers project a global environmental initiative established by Sir Jim Ratcliffe. It builds on decades of conservation work by the Strenger Angling Club, founded in 1959, the Marine and Freshwater Research Institute of Iceland, and Imperial College London. There is definitely signs that our work on the river has had some positive impact. Seeing more fish coming back into the rivers. We, Sela, for example, is now uh, among the highest rivers in Iceland. Scientists and communities working on the project in northeast Iceland hope they can find out why the population is in peril by researching the ecosystems where the fish live. And success here could provide knowledge that could help other species around the world. You know, after a certain period of research, we'll be able to propose actions we can take in the field, implement those, and then study how that goes afterwards and whether we've made a real significant change or not. Plastic waste and making sure we recycle is an important issue, which is why INEOS has developed a world first. A bottle cap with at least 50% recycled material. Bottle caps are made from very highly engineered plastic. They're, they're very, very important material. Nobody else has managed to create an advanced polymer, a polyethylene, from 50% recycled caps. It's a genuinely circular approach. This new range will see over 6.5 billion waste drink bottles recycled over the next five years. It means that we can take these raw materials from the market, from the caps market, from recycling, rather than using new raw materials like oil and gas to make these products. Um, it also makes sure that these products don't end up in the environment. INEOS will work alongside recycling company Foreverplast SPA, who sort and process recycled caps turning them back into raw material before combining them with a sophisticated INEOS polymer. This will then get sent to cap manufacturers who will put them into a variety of applications. We are really trying to increase the standard of this recycling industry to be able to go into that direction. So this partnership is very critical because we need to have this very good compounding facility, this good sorting facility, so that we are able to match 
the very high standard for the CAPS application. INEOS is really generating a new trend to increase the recycling content into the, the packaging industry. INEOS continue their drive to invest and improve all areas of the business with the announcement of a brand new office building in Runcorn. The 72,200 square foot four-storey office will provide a new, dedicated home for over 450 employees of Innovin. And just next door will be a 12,000 square foot gym and fitness complex, all designed to a grade A standard. It just wouldn't be INEOS without a gym. This month, INEOS Automotive launched a new social media series about the building of the Grenadier, INEOS's new uncompromising 4x4. Teaming up with automotive journalist Mark Evans, the videos will follow the progress of the construction of the vehicle and examine the components that will make up this tough, functional off-roader. So the ambition is clear. They're starting with a blank sheet of paper. The Grenadier is being designed and built from the ground up. Every component chosen by engineers at the top of their game, and that's got to be very good news. Join me next time when I'll be trying to find out more about the suspension setup. Look out for the films as they are released across Grenadier and INEOS social media. The first episode is out now. That's it for this episode of INTV. Thanks for watching, and extra thanks to those of you keeping our plants running in these difficult times. You are helping to ease this crisis through the products that we make. But remember, respect the two metre rule, monitor your temperature, wash your hands regularly and use the hand sanitizers frequently. Next time I hope to be coming to you from a different location. But in the meantime, please stay safe.